Okay, if you are ready to continue learning how to letter with a brush pen, I've got part four of the free intro to brush lettering series ready to go. Hit that like button and let's get started. So this worksheet has four parts. It's pretty long. I'm trying to make these videos much shorter. So I'm not gonna be doing so much lettering with you. I'm just gonna actually go over with what's here. I'll give you a demo if I think you absolutely need one, okay? Um, connecting letters is going to be part one. Bouncing baselines is part two. Decor is part three. And then four, we're gonna talk about common words. I'm gonna give you some examples and some stuff you can practice. Connecting letters. Now, many of you, this may be, you know, pretty baby. If it is, just go ahead and um, fast forward. But many of you may have been practicing individual letters, like over and over and over again. And now that it, we're, it's time to actually connect the letters, I just thought there were a few things that you should maybe know. Okay. So, um, basically, I have identified areas where you can lift your pen. Let me get a little closer. So I am showing you places where you would lift your pen before you actually would actually write your next letter, okay? This is something that you are not going to think about as you go further in your lettering journey, okay? Um, but it is something in the beginning that you really think about. It's just like driving. First, you're like really concentrating on every little thing and then the next thing you know you don't even know how you got you know downtown so it's just one of those things okay so just really quickly um you see where the uh stroke has uh ended here um you're going to make sure that your o is going to overlap that stroke and that's how we connect it i know it seems elementary but it is something that you need to think about because it's just going to make your lettering neater Okay, so then we're going to do the C-O-N, the C-O-N-N, C-O-N-N-E, and so forth. Okay, here, I just show you a few ways that this can go wrong. Um, sometimes you see lettering and it's so close together. You know, your letters, you can't even enjoy the letters. You know, you want to make sure that your letters breathe. If you really have a problem with this, then you may want to do some vertical lines um, just so you can make sure that you are evenly spacing these letters. And then down here, I just show you how it can be easy for you to miss connections, actually. And that usually happens when you're going too fast. Please slow down, okay? It's always better when you go slower, okay? We are going to have the uh, connections, the actual word connections. And I've actually indicated some white dots here. I don't know if you can see this. Okay, you see the actual white dots. It's not a typo, those are there on purpose. You see a dot here, 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 here. Those are just little ticks to let you know when you're gonna actually lift your pen up, okay? So I'll just do a little of it. Ah, lift my pen, connect. Make sure you overlap that stroke. Ah, I'm lifting my pen. Notice that it's corresponding to that white dot. Go down. Okay? And so forth. So I want you to try it yourself. Go ahead and darken up these grayed out connections and then do your own connections. And you can also use a different word. Okay? Plenty of practice room here. Two, we're going to talk about bouncing baselines. Okay, bouncing baselines, if you are not familiar with bouncing baselines, um, the reason why I refer to it this way and other letterers refer to it this way is because um, it's where these letters are actually violating the baseline. So it makes the lettering fun, it makes it whimsical, yay, you know, and it's actually absolutely taken over the wedding industry. I mean, it's probably been around since about 2010-ish, 2011. Um, it just started with a few digital fonts and then, you know, modern calligraphy was born. It was just everywhere. So, and you still see it everywhere. And it's fun. It, 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 it marks a fun day. Um, but not all attempts at bouncing baselines are successful because a lot of times letters will make the letters illegible. So, there are good places to actually bounce your letters, okay? So I want you to pay attention to this section, okay? Um, I have identified the letters 
CDHL M, N, R, and U as great places to bounce. And when I say bounce, I just mean that you're going to actually extend these letter forms below the baseline. So you're going to exaggerate it. You're going to exaggerate the downstrokes. Okay? That's all it means. That's all it means when I say that it's bouncing. Okay? So we've got the word evergreen that I used as an example. And, you know, you need to be careful. I know a lot of newer letterers will actually try to do it every other one. But you don't want to be too prescriptive here. I would not be too prescriptive here with uh, going up, down, up, down. It doesn't always work. Note the E. Look how exaggerated that E looks. I kind of like to stay away from exaggerating my E's because I want to make sure that the word is still legible. Okay, so you see here I have bounced the V, bounced the R, the G. You don't even think about because it it's already going up below the baseline. I bounced the R and I bounced the N. And even with the V, I didn't go too far down. So it just it's, it's kind of a rhythm that you get into. Okay, so this is something that I want you to practice. You can use a piece of tracing paper and actually go over the letters that I've actually bounced, or you can use uh, the blank sheets that follow this lesson and actually put your own bouncing letters in there or your own bouncing phrases. Okay, all right. Okay, so number three, we're going to talk about decor. Now, decor on your letters. Um, is something that I learned from Heather Victoria Hill. She's a Canadian calligrapher. She's awesome. Um, I usually will only use a lot of decor on my letters during the holidays because I just think it looks great. Um, it looks great on craft paper. It looks good on red paper with uh, bleed proof white and things like that. But these are just a few of the of the things that you can do. There's a lot more that you can do. And if you are interested in taking this further, you can just look up the hashtag. Um, it's hashtag offhand flourishing. Hashtag offhand flourishing. Use that on Instagram and you'll see a ton more. But this is great as far as you being a beginner to just actually have some go-tos. Okay, so I just wanted to go over these. Um, these are some basic leaves, the wheat, these all look much better too with a pointed pen tip, but with a brand new fine liner brush pen, you can still get some nice effects, okay? So number one, the leaf and the wheat. Number two, I just kind of tell you where you need to actually do the designs. And this will come with practice, but I just like to actually go along the curve of the letters, but that's something that you're gonna have to play with before you feel comfortable with it. And then uh, these are more options, just different designs that you can use. Um, the variety will help you. The variety will help add interest here, okay? And then this is how you actually will use your pen, okay? Um, you basically start thin, you add weight, and then it's thin. I know these kind of look like amoebas. <laughs> Sometimes it feels better if you do it away from you versus toward you. So try both ways, okay? But the the basis of doing this is actually just starting out thin, making it a little heavy, and then making it thinner. It's really just trying to get the shape of a leaf. And it won't be perfect. You'll get better as you do it. I'm not perfect because I haven't warmed up. You warm your hand up and you can get some great effects here, okay? We're gonna practice your own. Okay, so this is something that I'm going to demo. I'm going to demo this because this is not intuitive. Okay, um, if you look over here, make sure can you see it all? Okay, if you look over to your left, I have shown you a couple of examples of how to do this, mixing different elements like I spoke about. Um, you know, a little variety, actually filling in the leaves and leaving some blank. And then down at the bottom, I just indicated this just so you can think about balance as you go through this, okay? So I'm getting ready to do Christmas in July very soon. So let's do a phrase, okay? Let's do Mary Mary. Make sure you can see this. Okay. OK, 
Okay. Okay. So now that I haven't gone from left to right and I actually went on top to bottom, I would probably do some decor at the top and the bottom and the sides. You know what I mean? I'm not going to worry about going in here. I don't want to violate the area in between those two uh, words of the phrase. Okay. So a natural way for me to do this is that way. You want to start out. Ugh, it's horrible. Yeah. So you want to start out large and then go and make them smaller. I'm sure you can see. So you start out thin, add a little weight. So you see how it's kind of fading, okay? Another thing that you can do is add some dots. And this will kind of give you a road map of where you're going. Okay, so add some pressure. Okay, and then I would probably just add a few of the leaves. Okay, I'll show you a couple of options. Yeah, you can see that. So sometimes the line from the stem, letterals will use that as far as they are, their, their actual leaf that they're drawing. However, sometimes you don't want to use that and you want your leaf to be completely blank. Okay. Yeah. So I just like to mix it. I mean, you're gonna mix it. I mean, you're gonna do a lot of experimenting here. A lot of experimenting. Look at what I've already done and then try some phrases and then note on that first page with the basics where you can actually go, um, where you would actually pull or where you would add the flourishing. And then think about it being balanced, okay? We're gonna go to the next one. Okay, so these are things that you can trace, things that you can do. Um, I've done the months of the year and I've done the days of the week. So this is some great bouncing baseline practice for you to do. And that's it. So let's go over it. We did number one, we did connecting letters. Number two, we did bouncing baselines. Number three, we did decor. And four, I gave you some common words to practice and they're also bouncing. So this is like kind of a two in one that you can practice. Okay, don't forget to like and if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. I promise I'll be back with more content. Thank you. Bye.